Hello everyone. This is going to be the uh, disassembly and reassembly of a pre-1969 Thompson or TRW power stern pump for uh, Chrysler Big Blocks. Uh, this pump was on was originally in this car when I first started working on it and uh, had to take it off because it wasn't working and I sent it in to a professional uh, or it's supposed to be professional return rebuild service and I believe they replaced a couple of things in it like may maybe one of the o-rings and uh, one of the uh, and the uh, the uh, the shaft seal and maybe the bearing but uh, they didn't they didn't do anything else they returned it and said that it was not rebuildable so uh, I held on to it and just thought maybe I could maybe I can mess with it one day and uh, I took it apart the other day and found out that it uh, doesn't really have a lot of wear parts in it and I think I fixed what they said was not rebuildable. Uh, talked about that I think in one of my last videos I was had to uh, fix the uh, control valve. But uh, this is going to be the, the disassembly or reassembly not really a, a rebuild because I don't have a, the seals to go back in it yet. I will have those, but uh, the main ones that uh, I, ha I, I have to deal with when I do take it apart, those are actually fine, so I'm not going to not going to be doing those. But uh, when uh, we were, uh, my dad and I always thought that there was only two power stern pumps that 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 could be on these cars, and that was a Saginaw and a Federal style. When I started doing research on this pump, it turned out that there were three. There's Thompson or TRW. Saginaw and Federal. So uh, there's they are uh, the fe the Federal and, and the uh, Thompson look very similar. There are some diagrams um, online. I'll probably put a link to one in the description that shows the difference between the Thompson and the and the Federal. And in my last video, I show you the difference between the uh, Thompson and the. Uh, Saginaw that I actually have in here right now but uh gonna be doing this in my storage building so let's get back there and get to it well here it is here's the pump I've already got the brackets off of the pump and uh, I used a half inch socket I don't have the original bolts but I believe they were 13 millimeter or uh, a half inch uh, and I've already got those off brackets right there just keep those set aside gonna use the dead blow hammer to get the reservoir off of the pump I'm going to use this punch and this hammer when it's tight to loosen this ring right here I've already got it loose it took me a little bit to knock that so uh, this this will be a little bit difficult to get off at first but I've, I've already got that loosened up a uh, crescent wrench to help take off the stuff on the inside some uh, retaining ring pliers that also happen to be TRW that is just a pure coincidence and you'll find out what these uh, snips and zip tie is for in a minute but start off let's go get this ring off It's always good to clean up everything really good before it's going back for the final time. I don't have the O-rings uh, to finish the inside, but uh, I only need a couple, and I, and I don't have to dis I don't have to completely disassemble the pump to do that. But uh, let me get some of these tools set aside, and we'll uh, get that uh, case taken off. And you want a rubber mallet because you don't want to. You don't want to damage the metal around this around the around this rim too much. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. There you go. And I have had this off a few times, so mine might be coming off a little bit easier than yours might. You don't want to hit on on the on the on the on the spout too much because you don't want to dent it or risk breaking it off. Once it's broken loose, it should ow, should fall off. There it is. And I didn't want to let that fall down. But there's the reservoir. We'll keep that set aside. And this is the inside of the pump. 
I don't know what all the stuff is called. I think this, uh, I know this is the main control valve. This might be some kind of a relief valve. So let's get that on. Let's get that out. And like I said, I have already taken this apart. So uh, some of this, so this stuff is loose. Uh, when you take this off, it will have a, uh, looks like a uh, brass washer or a copper washer right there. And inside of this, let me go ahead and set this in, in my little canister here so I don't lose track of it. Inside of this, it's tight. There we go. Inside of this, it's got a spring in it, so be careful taking it apart. There it goes. Set that down. It's got this spring right there. And it's got another little piece inside here. It also has a little ball in there. So be very careful taking taking this valve apart so you don't lose that little ball. Clean up every uh, when I I've I've already cleaned this up got all the nasty stuff off of it so I can put I can just keep this keep this put back together and this does have looks like it has a nylon uh, is that gonna focus it's got a nylon uh, uh, part right there on the threads to help to help keep the threads locked I'm gonna have this taken apart again not necessarily this I just need to tighten that up the rest of the way but there's that and let's get the control valve taken apart and you really need a set of these pliers don't try to use uh, other methods that might that might scratch up and damage the bore or uh, or damage the the retaining ring I'm gonna get that lined up There it goes. It should pop out like that, like just like that did. I'm gonna put our ring in there so we don't lose it. This is the back part. Maybe you can use the retaining the retaining ring pliers to go in like that and spread them to pull it out. And there's got that spring in there and that is supposed to come out but that uh, is a, a bit of a pain to, uh, to pull out it, it's it's just that plug but uh, I do need to go ahead and take that out so I can show you what it looks like wasn't going to but I figured might as well so I can get that lined up there it goes Retaining ring goes in there, and I'm use my punch to go in. Hold my hand on the other side. Go my hand on the other side, and it's supposed to come out. This is this valve has uh, not been taken care of. There it goes. Just had to gently tap it. It's got the little o-ring on there that's an o-ring that i need to replace and then there's the valve it's a really simple valve Let's see if i can't zoom in on that give me one second right there there's the valve that that's how it goes Get my stuff lined up again. All right, there we go. We're gonna put this in here so we don't lose anything. Now, I'm going to, uh, let me see if I have anything I can rest this on. I don't think I do. We need to get 
this part right here out I don't I don't know really I don't really know what it's called but it's uh, this whole part right here comes out this right here is an is a seal I believe the return rebuild service I sent this into a long time ago did replace that because this is did before I sprayed that uh, metal protect on it uh, this did actually look like a brand new seal and the o-ring that's on here also looks new so I don't think I have to replace those and the bearing feels good too so let me I'm lining up the punch like that on the end and I'm gonna tap it with my little hammer I need to find find something to set this on This should work. There you go, and y'all can see that. That's good. Be careful not to just uh, bang on this and just let it fall out. Because that's what I did last time, and I just about lost some pieces out of it. Set a rag down there, try to catch it. Oh, rubber mallet should be fine too, but just a little bit. There it goes, it's cut falling out. Use that piece right there. Need a couple more hits on it. There it goes. There it goes. This can slide off. There we go. I don't want to pull the shaft all the way out yet, so that's why I'm doing this. There we go. And inside of here, there is a needle bearing. So when you're taking it apart, be very careful. If the bearing's in good condition, I wouldn't worry about replacing it. But if uh, the bearing's in, in bad shape, you got a little bit of slop, I would definitely definitely replace it. But this one, this one feels good. And like I said, I believe the Return Rebuild Service did actually replace that O-ring and the oil seal right here on the front. So I don't, so I don't have to worry about that. When replacing these. I would go in from the back or figure out a way to uh, to uh, pry out the bad seal and then knock out the old bearing from the back side. And I would highly suggest if you are replacing that bearing to use some kind of arbor press or a press like, like what I have um, to replace that bearing because those needle bearings can be easily, the casing can easily be damaged. So uh, I would highly suggest using some kind of arbor press. Uh, if you have it or a press, but if you but if you but if you don't have all that uh, Just be very gentle with the hammer and you should be able to get it in but uh, there's that I don't have to do anything with that So let's set that aside And this is the inside of the pump this was very fascinating I've Got a little spring I need to reset in there, but It just has metal fins in there to make this thing work. And let me pull that out. I can reset everything later. Okay. These springs are held in because they go in one way on this shaft. I'm trying to figure out the way on this one. And they kind of lock in. There it goes. See it locks in. There's four fins and eight springs. And we're gonna set that aside. I'm gonna put that back together in a second. 
and these are the fins. I would just inspect these, make sure they don't they don't have uh, too much heavy wear. These actually, I believe these actually look fine. And that's and that's the inside of the pump disassembled. That's it. There is a sleeve right here that is knocked in and cannot come out. But um, I have found a diagram that actually shows this to be a separate piece from the body of the pump. So uh, this, I believe, is a separate piece, but uh, it's not removable. So if yours comes out, there might be something wrong with your pump. But uh, there's that, and there's the bushing back here. This bushing actually looks still good. It doesn't, it doesn't have any slop in it, so I don't have to worry about that. And that's the disassembly. Now for the reassembly. If you don't know which way this goes, if you don't remember which way the fins were, look at the wear pattern of the groove. Now if y'all can see that, let me zoom in. See how that's uh, really shiny right there? And that bottom side is dull. That means the fin goes in here like this. This flat spot right here on the fin would ride exactly like that. Now let me get this put together. All the pieces lined up again. And I'm going to use this zip tie right here to actually hold everything in. Let me zoom back out. There it goes. I'm going to get the zip tie ready. And the fins have a notch right there, so that's why that's why you have to pay attention to it to which way you put it in. Yeah. So once you have one lined up, the rest of them are going to line up easy. It does take a little bit of patience doing this. There it goes. And there it is. That's why I use a zip tie to hold everything together to make putting it back to putting it back in very easy. Now we're gonna use the snips to cut off the extra because that's gonna be in the way. And make sure all the springs, when you're putting this in, the fins might try to creep up on you. Make sure all the fins stay in place because you don't want to uh, to pinch any of those any of these springs in the wrong direction or in the in the wrong way. Because you pinch them, it's, it's going to lock up the pump, and you're going to mess up your springs, mess up the fins, and mess up the pump. See that tried to pull up. I'll do have to just try to push it in, making sure all those fins are pushed down along with it. Once you get down far enough, It's a tedious process, but once you get it down, there it goes. That goes in. That's in. Now let me see if I can have find get some pliers in here if I have any, and see if I can rotate this. I might not have any pliers in here. Yes, I have some pliers. What I'm doing is rotating it to make sure none of the springs are in a bind. And they're all rotating beautifully. Nothing binding up. Okay, that's good. Alright. 
Now we're going to put this back in. So if I can get that set up. I'm going to knock it with this punch. You could also use a very big socket, but I just forgot to grab one. There it goes, fully seated, and I'm going to test it again just to be sure. Everything feels good, nice and smooth. Get our ring on. When you're putting this together for the final time, going to get that set, going to get that screwed in all the way. And I would suggest using like a punch to hold it right there and just to knock it really good a few times to get that ring really locked in because you don't want that coming out when you're when it's actually on the vehicle and going down the road. So you want this tight. I don't have to worry about it because well that I could actually finish tightening up, but I'm not going to do that right now. All right, let's get that put back right there. This end right here, let me try to zoom in a little bit. To... All right, there we go going to put this piece in right here going to get our first retaining ring in on this side get it in the groove looks like this locked in nice that in right there and then the plug sorry if my hands in the way trying to get everything put trying to get everything held in Didn't get that set in all the way. There it goes. Beautiful. Control valve is put together. This other valve with, with the washer right there. get that screwed in there it goes got that screwed in and there you go there's the disassembly and reassembly of a Thompson or TRW power steering pump I believe appropriate for pre-1969 uh, Chrysler and see if I can get this put back on it only goes on one way because it only it's only held on with with a one bolt and you line up that with that hole what you can do to help is thread in you can find the hole oh it's not lined up there you go thread in one of the one of the uh, one of the bolts in the back of the pump and you can set it down and 
and you'll know it's seated when the pump when the case rests against that flange right there all the way around you'll know it's fully seated it's not down all the way but when I put on the uh, the bracket it's going to uh, it's going to lock itself down and if it's not if it's uh, if you don't put the bolt in to line it up you can always just uh, hold it firm and gently tap you can gently tap on the uh, filler spout to try to get it to try to get it to rotate a little bit but mine's good and there you go there's the power steering pump reassembled and the bracket would go back on right about there well there it is the uh, disassembly and reassembly that pump is a very very simple pump you just have to put stuff back in the right order so it so it actually works right but uh there it is and uh, i don't have the uh the uh pulley or the reservoir sandblasted or painted yet but uh those that will be done before that pump goes back on this car and i will have a video for that uh testing it out seeing seeing if it actually works but uh there it is and uh, i'll see you later